It's like top 10, but just one better. Yeah, fucking intro. This is David Bowie. Let's get to the music. Number 11, Diamond Dogs. This song was written for David Bowie's 1974 album of the same name and debuts the character Halloween Jack, who lives on top of a skyscraper in Manhattan in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. The Diamond Dogs are a pack of feral kids that he rules over that are camped out on high-rise roofs. They tear around the city on roller skates, terrorising the corpse-strewn streets that they live above. I wonder why you don't get more roller skating drive-bys. Now, I'm not giving people ideas, but it would be efficient, would be efficient. As well as writing, producing and singing this song, David Bowie plays lead guitar, rhythm guitar, tenor saxophone and baritone saxophone. What a talented geezer. The opening crowd noise was taken from a Faces gig, and you can even hear Rod Stewart on the opening. So yeah, interesting that. Number 10, Gene Genie. Back in the 1970s, David Bowie couldn't just help but make hits. Hits were like phlegm to David Bowie. He just had to get them out. David Bowie was on a tour bus with his band, The Spiders From Mars, and him and Mick Ronson were jamming, and Bowie developed this song. This song was completed while David Bowie was spending time with the actress and model, Sarinda Fox, who is the girl from the Gene Genie music video and he said he wrote this for her enjoyment and well yeah well oh, she inspired you to write it here oh. Sarinda Fox also married the lead singer of New York Dolls David Johansson and Aerosmith lead singer Steven Tyler what a geezer she, she knew how to spot talent she must have had a good eye yeah, among other things number nine life on Mars it's a god awful small affair the girl with the mousy hair But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go Back in 1968, David Bowie's song publisher David Platts was sharing an office with Geoffrey Heath and Geoffrey brought in this French song that he had the English rights to and he asked David Platts if he knew anyone who could write some English lyrics to it. David Platts asked David Bowie and Bowie wrote them and nothing really came of the song and then Paul Anker bought the rights to the song and wrote some lyrics and Frank Sinatra got on the vocals and it became one of the most beloved hits of all time my way. David Bowie was pissed. It was like Sunderland not signing Maradona. So David Bowie was pissed and then a year later David Bowie went oh I'm David Bowie I'll just write a song based on my way and it'll be a classic. And he did. He wrote Life on Mars. This song is about escaping the dullness of life for the excitement of the movies. Everyone on this song is amazing. Mick Ronson has some of the best string arrangements I've ever heard on this song. And Rick Wakeman plays one of the best piano parts I've ever heard. What a tune. Number 8. Rebel Rebel. What a banger. This riff inspired by the Rolling Stones song Satisfaction is maybe as iconic. This is an ode to having a good time and not caring about what anyone thinks about you. The title is so perfect, he called it Rebel twice. So yeah, he proper means it. This is apparently David Bowie's most covered song. And I can see why, it's an absolute tune. Uh, one person who covered it was playing the guitar badly one night and woke David Bowie up from his sleep. David Bowie, he went and banged on his door and was about to tell him how, how to play the song properly. Then it turns out, it was John McEnroe playing Rebel Rebel. Yeah. And so he was like, oh, it's, it's alright mate, you know, that's, that's not a geezer. 
you want to be in an argument with. That was out of key. It was in. Number seven, Lady Stardust. If anyone wants to know why so many people who would be considered outcasts like David Bowie listen to this tune, it's a song about a man who doesn't comply to traditional gender roles, who wears makeup and is considered a freak by many people until he gets on stage and he blows people away with his talent. Apparently this song was a tribute to Mark Boland, a fellow legend and a mate of David Bowie. David Bowie recorded this song on the same day as he recorded Soul Love and Moon Age Daydream. My word. Number 6. Changes. Still don't know what I was waiting for And my time was running wild A million dead end streets And every time I thought I got it made It seemed the taste was not so sweet Great song, great album, great usage in Shrek Changes from the album Hunky Dory is a positive, vibrant, upbeat anthem about all the changes in life, at a time when David Bowie was going through changes. He was artistically reinventing himself and was having a baby. Well, I mean, his wife was actually having the baby. He didn't go through that many changes. The piano at the start and end of the song was played by Rick Waitman, and he was given freedom by David Bowie to play it as if it were a piano piece. And what a quality decision that was. Then, if Bowie wasn't already enough of a ledge, he whips out his saxophone for the end of the song and he takes it away. What a geezer. Number 5. Young Americans. David Bowie wasn't just happy being a rock legend, he wanted to add soul to his repertoire as well. He made some quality soul music, my favourite being Young Americans, the title track from his 1975 album. From the opening of this song right to the end, this song has me constantly smiling. The upbeat, funky music is a perfect juxtaposition to the cynical lyrics that give a critical view of America at the time. I talked about on a previous video how Wanna Be Starting Something might be one of the best openers to any album, but this has to be up there as well. This song is just a joyous anthem that establishes the sound for the rest of the album and just has me enthralled from start to end. <laughs> Number 4, Let's Dance. So David Bowie signed a new record deal. It's one of the most expensive record deals in the world at the time. And so the pressure is on. He has to have some hits. So he gets on the blower to Nile Rodgers. And we're in business. The first three tracks on his next album, Let's Dance, are all hits. And the third one, the title track, Let's Dance, becomes one of the biggest selling singles of his whole career. This song is so good that even when David Bowie was brown bread and it was being played on, on every radio station, every shop, every strip club, I wasn't sick of hearing it. I was like, you know what, this is still a tune. This is still a tune. This song is funky as fuck. And when you hear it, you react just like the title of the song. You want to say, yeah, let's dance. And the bird you're talking to will eventually go, no, I don't see you in that way. Um, but still, this is a quality tune. The opening of the song creates such an intense anticipation that pays off completely throughout the rest of the song, culminating in one of David Bowie's best ever vocals. I don't think anyone has said flower with that much intensity, even Gordon Ramsay. If all that wasn't enough, we get a solo on the end of the song by Stevie Ray Vaughan, and the trouser filling is complete. When loads of rock acts were getting into disco and people were getting all annoyed and burning records for some reason instead of just switching a radio station, David Bowie seemed to escape all this backlash. 
that's how good this song was that's how good this album was and just look at how cool david bowie looks in the video oh if i was why doesn't everyone always play guitar like that just looks so cool be nicer in your hands too number three moon age daydream Speaking of a quality guitar solo, check this song out. Mick Ronson did some of his best work on this song and shows why he's so loved. Keep your arm around him, Bowie, don't let him get away. Mick Ronson did the string arrangements on this song as well as providing backing vocals and playing the piano and playing some of the most amazing guitar I've ever heard. While David Bowie, as well as writing this song, provides some excellent vocals and an excellent bit of saxophone playing. He even gets on the penny whistle. He was covering all bases. Need that penny whistle on the tune geezer, yeah. The bass by Trevor Boulder and the drums by Mickey Woodmanson all come together to create this beautiful rock symphony that makes an already great album even better. It might even be the best song on this album. And that's tough competition with this album's track list. But I wouldn't say it's the best song of the album. Number two. Ziggy Stardust. Now Ziggy played guitar, jamming good with Wed and Gilly and the spiders from Mars. Moon Age Daydream introduces the Ziggy Stardust character on the album, and this tune is why the character is so beloved. This song documents the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust, an alien rock superstar who is the ultimate rock god, a composite of several different rock stars. The character was partly inspired by Vincent Taylor, who David Bowie met after Vincent had a breakdown and believed he was a cross between an alien and a god. Oh, wish he'd have met Kanye. Everything about Ziggy Stardust is genius. His look, the story of the character, and just the overall innovative nature of this idea. As someone born over 20 years after this song was released, I can't appreciate the impact of this song. Hearing this at that time and seeing Siggy Stardust being performed must have been so mind-blowing back then. And still today, this song sounds ahead of its time, with some of the greatest lyrics ever written, painting some of the most outstanding mental images I've ever heard and fittingly a lot of them are mental. This is seen as one of the greatest songs of all time and I can see why. Here are some honourable mentions. Pretty much everything he released from the late 1960s to the mid 1980s. All, 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 all quality, all quality, nothing but, but amazing music, just all of it, all of it, all of it. Even some of the stuff from his cancer period as well was, was, was fucking quality, it was good, yeah, so, all of that, yeah. Number one, Heroes. It takes something special to keep Ziggy Stardust from number one, and fuck me, this song is special. Coming after David Bowie's 1975 classic album, Station to Station, which David Bowie was so fucked up on cocaine at the time, he didn't even have any memory of recording it. He's literally forgot more about making music than most people will ever know. Anyway. After releasing that, he moved to Switzerland to escape LA's drug culture, then to France to record an album with Iggy Pop, which turned out to be The Idiot, which is another all-time great. Then David Bowie moved to Germany to record the Berlin Trilogy. He makes hits wherever he goes. His version of Travelling could probably have a greatest hits album. This song, the title track to the second album in the Berlin Trilogy, Heroes, is co-written by David Bowie and Roxy Music synthesizer player Brian Eno, and it was inspired by seeing Tony Visconti, the producer, necking his bird by the Berlin Wall, making this one of the most productive cases of peeping in history. Wonder if that makes David Bowie a peeping major Tom. This song is an inspiring tune about two lovers, one from each side of the Berlin Wall, risking their lives to be with each other. 
to be heroes just for one day. Oh, they must have proper had the yawn. This song is one of the most inspiring, well-produced pieces of music I've ever heard. Its 1987 performance by David Bowie in Berlin is credited by many as being a big inspiration for the fall of the Berlin Wall. This song is so beautiful and its usage at the end of Perks of Being a Wallflower and Jojo Rabbit bring a tear to my eye every time I watch those scenes. One of the greatest songs I've ever heard, I can't say enough about it. Check out David Bowie's performance of it at Live Aid, it's the perfect song for that occasion and can probably make any occasion better. Well, except an X Factor episode. I mean, they have a special level of bollocks, but even playing it on there didn't save the show. But still, what an anthem. Anyway, thanks for watching. And let's play out the video with this tune. That's got to get the subs up. Wake up!